truth is also proclaimed through the lips of God's messengers. But once you understand the truth of God, then you will begin to see God really blessing your life. Hello, and welcome to The Sure Word. Thank you for tuning in. I'm your host, Brother Kenneth Ines. Today we talk about friendships. The word gets tossed around a lot. In many cases, the word has become devoid of any real meaning. Very few know the value of a true friend. And more importantly, are you a friend of God? In this relevant and practical study, Bishop Jonathan encourages us to cultivate deeper and more redemptive relationships. And that our greatest friend of all is God Himself. Let's dive into the topic, Heavenly Friendship, by Bishop Jonathan Ferriol. Watch and be blessed. This morning, our meditation is gonna be uh, entitled, Heavenly Friendship. Heavenly Friendship. You do not need to think that God is separated from you or He is someone who is disconnected and He is far from you. I want you to know that you can befriend God. So in order for us to enjoy God, is to have more of God in His words in our hearts, to have more of His words, to follow the teachings, and to follow the doctrines given to us by the Lord Jesus Christ through the lips of His preachers. Number two, God and or his son jesus christ has given his life for us and so this is the second thing that god is doing or jesus christ is doing to make us really his friends he is giving his life for us one of the principal signs one of the most remarkable signs of a true friend is he is someone who will fight for you are you with me? Yes. Do you have someone in your life who is fighting for you? A friend will never have second thoughts of giving his life for you. That is why husband and wives should be the best of friends. How many among you, you can say that your husband is your best friend? How many among you are lying? No, I'm just kidding. I believe that husband and wives should also be the best of friends. And I praise God because I have Pastor Tess as my best friend. She is my greatest defender. Husband and wives should be the best of friends. And your friendship should be able, listen to this, to go to that farthest extent that if one of you needed to give his life, you will not have second thoughts of giving your life for your spouse. Your marriage should reach that point. Oftentimes, many spouses suffer emotional abandonment when they get sick, when they are not beautiful anymore, <laughs> when they are not anymore when they are not earning much anymore they are taken for granted they are dismissed they ended up fighting on their own i want you to know that you must be your spouse's greatest friend parents you must be your children's greatest defender we must be a friend to everyone you see jesus christ is our greatest friend because Jesus Christ gave his life for us that's how much 
God is invested in our friendship. Are you getting this? Are you following this? He is invested. You know, He is not just a so-so friend. He is not just a friend during good times, a fair weather friend. He is your friend through thick and thin, through your darkest times. Come high water or hell, Jesus Christ is a friend who is sticking with you. And He has shown that to you by giving His life at the cross. The book of John chapter 15 verse 13, Jesus Christ said this, Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down His life for a friend. If you will lay down your life for a friend, we used to be dead, but thanks be to what Jesus Christ has done, we have now life. Amen. Amen. He has given us His life. He has given us His health. And He continues to save us. He continues to defend us. Again, let's remember who we were. Let's remember our former states. Let us remember what kind of life we used to live before God made us His friends. We were sinners. We were weak. We were powerless. The book of Romans chapter 5 verses 6 to 8 tells us, you see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates His own love for us. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. At the cross, Jesus Christ was defending us. You see, Satan was, is, was and is our enemy. You see, this is what you can say about great friendships. It's always protective. Great friendships are like shields. It will cover you. It will insulate you like a rubber insulates copper wire from being grounded. The, a great friendship will always insulate you. Great friendship will always cover for you. God, that is what God has done and that is what God is doing for us. Satan is our enemy. He wants to destroy us. He wants to annihilate and ruin us. But at the cross, thanks be to God, God made these powers that are negative and dark neutralize. He nailed them at the cross. And so thanks be to God, at the cross, the power of Satan was made neutralized. So do not think that the sufferings of Jesus were His sufferings for His own sins. Don't you ever forget that. That the reason Jesus Christ was at the cross, the reason He was crucified at the cross was because of our own sins, was because for our own wickedness. We were meant to to die we were meant to perish but our greatest friend that we have that we can ever had took our place and he died for us and not only he died for us jesus christ rose again from the dead to overcome that's why jesus christ is a great friend until now he is fighting for us even now he is defending for us the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 31 says, If God is for us, who can be against us? If God is for you, who can be against you? What is it that can be against you? Nothing, nothing will ruin you. Nothing will eventually destroy you. Nothing will overwhelm you. Even death could come. Bankruptcy could come. Poverty could come. But eventually, those who trust in the Lord will stand forever. Those who trust in the Lord will come out as victorious and as champions. If God is for us, who can be against us? 
in the book of, of John chapter 17, in verse 15, it says there, My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. To God be the glory. God is protecting us. God is shielding us. God is covering for us. And all we need to do is bank on the friendship that we have with the Lord. Now, being a friend with God doesn't mean that you will not experience trouble, that you will not go through all kinds of tribulations. But even in those times, even in those seasons of heartache, brokenness, sickness, bankruptcy, breakdown of our relationships, God will be there for you. Amen. The psalmist said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Amen. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into the fire, but God was with them. Amen. Daniel was thrown in the lion's den, but God was with him. Amen. The faithful preacher of righteousness, Noah, went through the flood, but God saved them. And today, when you are a follower and disciple of Jesus Christ in the church, you will also enjoy God's protection. You see, it is those who are God's friends that He will protect. Look at those verse again. Look at those verse. It says, My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. There, Jesus Christ is speaking about those who are part of His true church. Because it is those in the true church. It is the men, it is the women who are in God's true church that will enjoy God's protection and God's shielding. Jesus Christ said in Matthew 16, 18, that even the gates of hell shall not overcome the church. The church will last. The church will enjoy longevity. The church will enjoy prosperity. This world will be ruined. This world will be destroyed in God's righteous judgment. The walls of our society will eventually crumble. The most powerful government will eventually dissipate. But the institution of God's true church will remain forever. And praise be to God, we are part of that true church of the Lord Jesus Christ. God is giving His life for us, even now. That's why there is life in the church. If you separate from the church, you will end up on your own. You do not have life on your own. You do not have power on your own. You need the life of God. You need the power of God. And the power of God is in the church. In the church, the weakest will become the strongest. The poor will become rich. Those who are downtrodden will be given justice in the church. And even in human civilization. This is what made the church strong. Because during the ancient times of the Romans, the downtrodden, the afflicted, the marginalized, all of this kind of people, they sought shelter in the church. Especially the women. During that ancient time, there was no equality of gender. Women were women. They were constantly stepped upon. They were constantly abused. And they were treated as second-class citizens. But somehow, the women of the ancient time, they found value and meaning and worth in the church. That's why Jesus Christ was constantly surrounded by both male and female disciples. Because they found their meaning. They found their value in the church. And today, you will enjoy the same protection, the same value in the church. Number three, how does God make us His friends? He revealed His plan for us. This is what He does. He reveals His plan for us. In John 15, 15, it says there that I'm not calling you servants 
Because as far as my revelations are concerned, I am giving, I am revealing everything I know about the Father to you. And so this is what makes for a strong friendship. We share our innermost desires with our friends. You see, friendship involves communication. God is revealing His heart, His dream, and even secrets unto us. John 17, John 17, verses 6 and 7. It says there, I have revealed to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. They know that everything you have given me comes from you. This is the great thing about our God. He's always revealing His heart. He's revealing His plan. He has written His words for us. God has sent preachers like the apostle in our midst to tell us the whole unadulterated, unvarnished word of God. You see, even though you have the Bible in your possession, but without the real preachers of the Word of God, you may not be able to fully understand His words. You needed to be taught. You needed to be schooled. We needed to be shepherded by the true preachers of the Word of God. Because they are the ones that have been given authority by God to unpack and to demonstrate and to expose to us the words of the Lord. Amen. Colossians chapter 1 verse 25, Paul mentions, I have become its servant by the commission God gave me to present to you the word of God. The word of God in its fullness. God has revealed His plans to us. God is constantly teaching us who He is, what He is doing. He has raised up our apostle, the good man of the house. He knows God's will for His church. That's why He is the good man of the house. Particularly, the good man of the house knows the watches of the night. He knows exactly where we are in God's timetable. And it is when we heed, when we follow, when we listen and obey His teachings that we will enjoy strength and blessings. In the book of 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19, we have the surer words of prophecy. That's what we have in the PMCC Fourth Watch. That's what we possess. This is what we believe. We have the surer words. We have the prophetic message that is completely reliable. And it says there, you will do well. You will do well to pay attention to it. Amen. How many among us are paying attention to the teachings of His Amen. Apostle in the church? And so right now, we have the mind of Christ. Amen. This is what we know. We are not a friend of a stranger. Oh no, God is no stranger to us. God is our friend. And as a friend, He has revealed. He is constantly revealing His will unto us. That is why, my dearest brethren, you need not to live your life in spiritual ignorance. Stop scratching your head as if you do not know what to do in this end of the last days. You know exactly what to do. This is the time for us to wake up from our slumber. Because the Bible says our salvation is nearer, nearer now when we first believe. And last but not least, He is calling us to join Him in His work. Friendships must always find some common ground in something. Listen to me. God enjoys being our God. Amen. God enjoys us. Do, do you get that? Yes. 
let me say this again. He enjoys us. Say it with me. God enjoys me. And I, say it with me, and I enjoy God. The greatest joy we have is God. You know, when, when God saw the baptism of His Son, the Father said, This is my Son, whom I am well pleased. God enjoys His people. We are the sheep of His pasture. He gets a huge kick being with us. And not only that, He also opens up for us to join Him. It's good that you are always with God. And the best place to be with God is in His work. <laughs> always make yourself part of God's work. That's the time you will enjoy God. When can you enjoy God? When can you enjoy your friends? When you are always in touch with them. When you are always with them. And Jesus Christ is inviting us. In John chapter 9, in verse 4, it says there, Let us do the work of Him as long as it's day. We must do the works of Him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. You know, in the Bible, night can be interpreted in different ways. Number one, night can be death. Night can be death. Evil days can be disease. It's better to serve the Lord while you are enjoying relative health. While we have the strength, the freedom, we have relative ease, convenience, to God be the glory. Do the work of the Lord. Do the work of the Lord. And so, why? Because night is coming. What is this night? It could be a tragedy. It could be something terrible. We all know that life can sometimes throw you a curveball. Isn't it? That's what we call tragedies, curveball. We do not see it coming. But Andre Agassi calls Curveball as the kitchen sink being thrown at him. The entire kitchen sink. Sometimes life throws a curveball. Before that comes, do the work of the Lord. Amen. Young people, while you have the health and the strength and the time, serve the Lord. Amen. You do not need to experiment with poison. You do not need to experiment with the world. Fame has nothing for you. The people of the world has nothing to offer to you. Worldly success is overrated. There's nothing wrong being successful in your career, in your endeavors, in your vocation. But what is success when at the end of the day your soul is suffering? Jesus Christ said, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Listen to me. You can be successful and godly. You can be academically uh, smart and accomplished and godly. You can be a successful businessman and godly. Because God is not a destruction. God is not a liability. God is your friend. Do you believe that? He is always looking out for your best interests. God is lo always looking out what's going to favor you. What's going to make you in an advantageous position. And how can we become friends with God? Do the commands of the Lord. Verse 14 of John chapter 15. My friends are those who do what I command. Get into the circle of God's friendship. Follow His commands. 
Get into that circle of friendship. Follow His will. Get into that circle of divine friendship. Fulfill His plan in your life. Those who are my friends are those who do the commands of the Lord. And this is the command of the Lord. To serve Him with all our hearts. To serve Him with all our strength. And if you are one who has no guarantee yet that God is a friend, receive Jesus Christ right now, right here, and say, God, I want to be your friend. I want to receive Jesus in my heart as Lord and Savior. God wants to be your friend. He's your ultimate help in times of trouble. He even promised He will never leave you or forsake you. Imagine this. God's inviting you to share a relationship with Him. He wants you to know Him and to know the love He has for you. Isn't that amazing? He wants to come into your life. He wants to be there for you. Do you want a deeper, richer connection with God? This is the place to start. We'd like to be your friends too. Let us get to know you. Dial our number and let us pray for you. Our phone lines will be open even after our program. Feel free to dial our number. We hope you can visit our church at a location nearest you. Join us for our Sunday worship or for our midweek services. Give us a call for more information. Once again, thank you for tuning into the Sure Word. Until next time, God bless you.